Good evening, everyone. I welcome all the speakers and our audience for today's webinar on the topic, Sustainability in Thread Dyeing, a Digital Revolution Within the Textile Industry. Today's webinar is brought to you by Twine Solutions, along with their Indian partner, Orange Tech, in association with The Textile Magazine. By default, the mic and the webcam would be on mute for all the attending audience. But if you have any specific question, please use the chat window, mention your name, the organization whom you represent, and the speaker to whom you would like to address this question to you. We will try our best at the end of the webinar. If not, the speaker will get back to you once the webinar is over directly to your mail ID. All right? Without further ado, Yara. Andy has a profound experience in digital to analog transformation in many industries such as print, signage, packaging, ceramics, and of course, in textiles as well. With more than two decades of experience in this field, Andy started his career with Xerox dealer in the north of England and has worked with many world-leading digital technology providers, including EFI and Corner Digital. For the last seven years, he has been located here in Asia. First, he was in Tokyo and now in Hong Kong. Prior to COVID, Handy ha was a frequent traveler to India and has vast experience across the Asia Pacific market. Andy joined uh, Twine Solutions earlier this year to start their business in the Asia, and he is delighted to be introducing Twine Solutions to us today. The mic is yours, Andy. Thank you very much. Much can I say? Thank you. Everyone for joining the call and giving us uh, that today. My voice is there, and you can hear me. Our presentation today is talking about giving our most proud, which is time. And about a market opportunity. Sure, I'm, a, I'm a proud Yorkshireman, and obviously, uh, there's a lot of cricket uh, on the call, I'm sure, today. I'm certainly a cricket fan, being, being from uh, that part of the world. Um, I moved to Tokyo maybe seven years ago. And to be in the region, it's seen huge growth. My background is in graphic design. Um, I always thought I'd be a graphic designer, but I fell into the printing industry, as you said, more than two decades ago. So it makes me sound very old. Um, in that time, I've really had the, the opportunity to, to work with some amazing companies. As you mentioned, I started my career uh, with a Xerox dealer and then moved into sales with uh, companies like EFI and with uh, management positions there and, and with Cornet Digital. Uh, my passions outside of work, although I didn't really used to get a lot of time to, uh, to exercise my passions. I'm a real art enthusiast. I love cooking. I love hiking and weightlifting and um, I do that to justify me drinking Guinness at the end of uh, at the end of the day. So I'm I'm really um, an avid uh, kind of fitness focused guy, and uh, I really like to to spend my time uh, keeping fit so I can justify my uh, my pints of Guinness. Um, I've been very very lucky over the pandemic in many many countries from Australia. In New Zealand, Japan, Korea, and Thailand, India. Um, I think I've traveled to India maybe 24, 25 times in the past. So throughout my, my working career, and even in my personal life now, as I try to fit in my two to three hours of exercise every day, time for me is really important. Time is critical. Um, everything's moving at a faster pace. Things change more frequently. Um, and digitalization is a major driving force. We're all contactable 24 hours a day these days. So there's no downtime, and we see the rate of change and the pace of uh, development and, uh, and, and transformation speeding up more and more, particularly in these COVID times. Just to give some examples of where we see this change, I'll talk um, about my, 
my first, I guess, my first career um, in the printing technology space. Obviously, woodblock was around, um, you know, in 200 BC, uh, people making prints that way. Um, Gutenberg invented the printing press. Actually, quite funnily, I saw today that, that people are campaigning to get uh, Lego to, uh, to make a Gutenberg printing press, uh, which is kind of funny for me. Um, and then lithography and offset and, and, and digital technology has moved in. So that transformation has taken a long, long time. But we see now in textiles, uh, non-traditional printing markets, textiles and ceramics, um, there's a huge kind of move towards digital. And I think a famous quote from someone called Benny Lander, who's a, who's a very big name in the printing industry, is that eventually anything that can be digital will be. And we're seeing that in other markets as well. So I guess one of the oldest things we can compare this to and, and in terms of evolution is um, payment methods, money, in, uh, in other words. So obviously people have been bartering for many, many years, whether that's um, trading crops or animals uh, to physical objects, obviously the invention of paper money, gold and credit cards. And now things like cryptocurrencies are becoming more and more mainstream. Um, moving from Japan, everything was very much cash-based, but here in Hong Kong, we just tap to pay with our phones or our credit cards, and it's very, very straightforward. So that's an evolution that's taken quite a long time. As you look at something else that's changed um, in recent times, certainly music formats. Uh, I certainly remember buying my first, uh, first LP, my first record, my first piece of vinyl. I still have friends that buy vinyl. Um, I remember my first tape and CD and even... I was very lucky to receive one of the first iPods. Um, but these days, the way we consume music has changed. Most people these days have a subscription to something like Spotify or to iTunes um, or music, Apple Music. And that's really changed quite quickly over the past 10 to 20 years. Where we've seen very slow development is in the dying process. So um, thousands of years ago, when people were grinding um, minerals and grinding plants for, for different colors, that's how we, we started to dye the original um, fabrics and, and cloths. That didn't really change for maybe 4,000 years. And we had obviously efficiency improvements, uh, improvements around the 1980s, but then the dyeing process has really changed. So it's a very brief moment of modernization um, 40 or so years ago, and then stayed pretty static. And we all know that there's a big, big challenge in the dyeing industry with, uh, with water, and, and we'll talk about that as we go through the slides. But where twines come in is to really revolutionize this dyeing process. We want to revolutionize the start of the supply chain. Uh, where we see lots of technology providers, it's at the end of the supply chain, printing onto either fabrics or onto garments, um, we want to start right at the beginning of the supply chain because we see that's where there's the biggest challenge and the biggest uh, problems. So Twine's a pretty new company. I want to explain in the next few slides where we've come from and what our vision is. Um, but our vision really is to lead the digital transformation of the thread and textile industries for better performance and most importantly, greater sustainability. So to give you a very brief history of Twine as a company, this is our Twine line, if you like. Um, back in 2005, our two founders, who are incidentally twin brothers, which is where the, a play on words comes with the name Twine, um, Arez and Alon Moshe, uh, both with huge amounts of experience in the digital print world, uh, founded Twine. And it really came from an idea that Arez had while he was sitting in his hotel room, looking at the beautifully embroidered towel that uh, his hotel had provided him in the bathroom. And he saw all these bright colors and figured that there was a big problem here and a big opportunity to change the way that embroidery thread uh, was dyed. Um, very much an on-demand uh, mindset coming from the digital print space. So what Arez and Alon tried to do was develop uh, a process and a system and inks for dyeing thread. They worked with a, a company in, in Israel called Delta Galil, uh, one of the big manufacturers in, uh, in Israel, a very well-known um, company, and you'll hear from one of the vice presidents of R&D as we go through this, the, the presentation, we have some videos. They started working on a system that we'll talk to you about in a few slides time. They launched at ITMA, which was a trade show in Barcelona uh, just over two and a half years ago now, and then installed their first system in, uh, in Europe back in 2020. 
Then, of course, COVID hit, so it slowed the uh, slowed the development. But I came on board in January this year to start the business here in Asia and find partners like Orange Group, who we'll talk about later. And we had the first showing of the products in Asia here in Hong Kong um, in July with our partner here. And we're actually installing one of our first systems in China this week as we speak. So it's very exciting times. The great news is this is, has happened, obviously, very, uh, very coincidentally. But the first, uh, first time we'll show this product in India will be this week at the Gartec show in Delhi. Um, so please, uh, please make a note as we get to the end of the presentation of the booth number so you can go and see the, the team at Orange Group. So it's very exciting. Things are moving very quickly. And we see that there'll be a huge um, uptake and huge acceptance of our products as we move forward. And our mission is really clear. We want to be the de facto standard for transforming not only the supply chain, but the production in the textile space, in sewing, knitting, embroidery, those decorative markets. Uh, we want our customers to be focused and innovative and really be committed to developing this, this new style and new way of working. Um, our solutions, obviously, we've partnered with many companies, but we're looking at workflow, the dyeing system itself, the inks and the materials. And then what we really want to enable is this new uh, methodology, this new uh, process of selling and then on-demand manufacture. The important thing for all of our customers is that time is money. As we see, there's a, a big shift of the way that people produce and the way that people manufacture. Obviously, COVID has really impacted um, many, many different uh, industries, not least of all the textile industry. We've seen real horror stories of, of goods sitting on uh, sitting in warehouses and sitting in the port being destroyed because they aren't able to get them to, uh, to stores. Stores closing, of course, is a big thing that we see on the high street. Um, and what we see, the quote at the bottom here is, it, it makes real sense. When production is in line with demand, the margins of producing domestically can be higher than offshore production because it's on demand and people accept there's a, there's a price to pay for that and a, and a premium. There's a really nice quote here from a very, very famous guy. Obviously, as I say, I'm here in Hong Kong, um, over the border in, in China. There's a huge organization called Alibaba. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. And Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba, said that in the past, it would be impressive if an assembly line could produce 2,000 of the same garment in five minutes. Today onwards, making 2,000 different garments in five minutes will be more impressive. I can share with you from my experience, having been to Alibaba, they're very focused on this instant and on-demand manufacturing and they're changing the way that uh, garments are consumed in, in China. The way that that will work as we move forwards into this new normal is more and more factories and more and more nearshoring, more, more and more, sorry, micro factories and nearshoring. Operating closer to brands and sometimes within them, obviously, can act in three different ways. Number one, uh, in-house manufacturing. So more brands will take on manufacturing themselves um, or even subcontract people to manufacture in their, in their facilities. More research and, de and development departments will look at prototyping in-house instead of sending that away and, and, and the time that that takes. And then we'll find more and more small and medium-sized factories, those micro factories that we spoke about. And there's a really interesting quote at the bottom of this, uh, of this slide here. It says, uh, from, from McKinsey, the, the consulting company, obviously very, very uh, famous, using the design studio to speed up the prototyping process or on the shop floor to provide high customization and zero waste. Micro factories will take off in the next few years. I don't disagree with any of that, but the interesting point for me was this was the state of the fashion industry study that was done in 2019, way before COVID was a, was a big impact on us. And this has only accelerated this transition to micro factories. And I see this every single day when I'm speaking to customers here in Hong Kong and around the, around the region. And my colleagues are obviously speaking to people around the globe. We're seeing much more focus on micro factories and, and small uh, customized orders. So in order for us to fulfill this type of uh, new customer expectation, we need an adaptable solution and something that will be really enabling that on-demand production. And this is where we introduce the TS1800, the world's first on-demand thread and yarn dyeing system. So I now want to play a short video. I hope 
the, the bandwidth is clear enough for everybody as we as we play this video. We will obviously make the, the, the video and the presentation available afterwards. But let me play a short video to introduce our product. Say hello to Digital Threat Dying. This is the TS-1800, the world's first digital threat dying system by Twine Solutions. Simply load raw or off-the-shelf white thread. Choose your desired colors and the length you need. And begin dyeing. The white thread is dyed in a treatment chamber using Twine's TDI inks, mixed in the precise amount for the thread type. The ink is fixed into the thread fibers in a drying chamber, after which it is applied with a lubricant. The thread emerges in the exact color you chose, in the length you need, ready for immediate use. A revolutionary new solution for your sewing, knitting, or embroidery production needs. Stop waiting weeks for your color samples and shorten lead times by obtaining your dye thread immediately saving you time and money. Simplify your stock management by eliminating dead stock and never running out of stock. No more need for large inventory of colored thread. Offer your customers unique capabilities with color gradients and real personalization with items never seen before. Wine's dyeing process is a closed loop and waterless system. By producing only what is needed, Twine eliminates waste and reduces pollution and emissions, bringing a much-needed sustainable solution to textile production. Take your business to the next level with Twine's digital thread dyeing system and join us as we bring the digital revolution to the textile industry. So I hope everyone managed to hear the, the video and, and managed to see what we're, uh, what we're, what we're talking about today. Um, it really is an amazing revolutionary product. Um, but why do we need it? Why do we need a product like the TS-1800? And why do we need to die digitally? So there are obviously four major pillars that we want to talk about here. So number one is on demand. We've already spoken about the change in the way that people will consume, the way that people order and, and what people want to wear in terms of their garments. So reducing the time to market is really critical. Um, digitization or digitalization here, so, so creating dye to match samples in order to speed up the production process, um, give you really easy tools. The great thing about our, uh, our system is that if you can use a mobile phone, you can use our product. You don't need any specialist knowledge or any special uh, qualifications to operate the, uh, the TS-1800. It's as simple as operating a touchscreen uh, iPad or or, uh, or tablet or mobile phone. And then personalization. From one order to the next, micro factories or people producing garments do not know in a digital world what the next job will be. So making it very easy and straightforward to make personalized um, production is obviously critical. And then for me, the most important thing is the is the eco-awareness. The, the consumer today is much more aware of sustainability. We saw recently there was a, um, a huge summit in, in the UK talking about the, the, the planet and climate control. And obviously, the textile industry has a huge part to play there as well. So reducing waste and emissions is really important. So connecting all these together, it really correlates with industry trends, the COVID impact, and that supply uh, supply chain shortage and, and accelerating the adoption to new technologies. So essentially, to play on a on a fairly um, popular kind of um, uh, title, no time to die. Obviously, the recent James Bond movie, but it really is relevant to uh, to us in our in our industry. Dying takes time. We want it to be fast. We want it to be efficient. We want to disrupt that process. So let me give you some examples of where our technology can come in to uh, to the to the uh, process. So first of all, let's talk about socks production. And remember this uh, this this example here, because we'll talk more about that in a real life uh, example as we go through the slides. So take a small run, a small production run of two hundred pairs. So generally, the the yarn that we would use is one hundred and fifty denier thread, uh, one hundred and fifty denier yarn. For example, Sala, which is obviously an Indian brand that we uh, that we can dye uh, successfully, we need something like 4.8 grams per sock. 
Um, so in, to- in total for 200 pairs, just under a kilo. That would take us pretty much 16 hours to dye. So it's not a fast process, but obviously it's on demand. And the ink would cost around about 45 cents per pair. Um, that's US cents, of course. And as I said, we'll, uh, we'll talk about a, a, a real life example of this in a second. So remember that cost of 45 cents. The next thing is some salesman samples. So here we have a sports bra. Obviously, athleisure is a big thing these days. Uh, companies like Lululemon and Sweaty Betty that we get here in uh, in Hong Kong and, and obviously the major sports brands are really focused on that athleisure market. So in order to make the, the small logo on this nylon uh, garment, we need a 75 denier yarn. Again, it's uh, available through Sala. Um, around about 0.5 of a gram or 0.05 of a gram per logo. So we need something like six grams for 10 units. It takes 24 minutes to dye. So imagine you have a specific color that you want to get instead of waiting for that to be shipped to you. We can dye it pretty instantly, 24 minutes for what we need. And the ink cost is uh, around about six cents US. So that's another example of where we can uh, where we can produce pretty efficiently um, a small, uh, small run of salesman samples or even a small capsule collection. And then the next one is shoe uppers. So I'm seeing a huge amount of uh, interest in our product for shoe, uh, sports shoe development. And generally what I'm hearing from these guys who are producing sports shoes for Adidas and different sports brands is they would need for most sports shoes for most seasons between 10 and 20, uh, and sometimes some instances 30 different colors for each uh, season. So that would generally be done on a 150 to 300 denier um, yarn. So this instance of coat's knit. Uh, we need 12 grams per shoe, 300 grams for 25 uh, colors. Uh, and then all of those colors would be dyed within 10 hours at a, at a cost of around $2.14 per shoe. Now, the interesting thing is when you compare that to the current way that this is done, um, these guys would have to order for every color that they, uh, that they dye something between three and five kilos of yarn for every single color. You can see here, we'd, we'd use something like 12 grams per shoe. Um, so there's a huge amount of waste. We got three kilos to five kilos of yarn. We need a few grams of it. The rest either goes into storage, which obviously has a cost. There's a cost to shipping that as well. Um, and obviously there's a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of challenges with, uh, with storing that and maintaining that, uh, that type of uh, storage. So, these are just some examples of the types of jobs that we talk to customers about every single day. And it's reflected here. Um, the traditional dyeing process starts with a designer who comes up with a color. They then want to get that uh, dyed by the dye mill, dye house. They send it, obviously, as a sample, uh, either by um, local mail or, or courier. Some instances, their own, their own guys. Chances are, if it's not in, uh, in, in our part of the world, it needs to be flown um, to the dye house in either China or India or other parts of uh, parts of our region. The dye house then dyes. It takes them a few days. They send it back, obviously incurring um, fees and shipping costs and not to mention the CO2 um, uh, kind of cost as well. And then designer, the designer either approves or sends it back for another, uh, for another round of, uh, of color matching. So there's a real... Um, challenge and a real time lag in getting this. And, and in a lot of cases, the designer, the brand can't wait. They need that instant gratification. So this is a real challenge. I want to share with you, we've got a, a system being installed in China right now at a customer. I can't share with you who that is, of course, um, but this is a real life example. So they currently take for a dye to match sample around about 15 days to get that approval. And they've done lots of studies. This is Pretty, uh, pretty accurate timing. So as we say here, going back to our last slide, the sample request takes a day. They look internally to see if they've got a visual match for the color. If they don't, they send it to the, to the dye, uh, dye house, to the mill. The sample takes eight days or so to, to come back, ship it back to site. They put it on the loom to, to, to weed the sample um, and the finished sample takes a day. And then if they're happy with that, they'll go to bulk production. With our solution, They've, um, they've estimated and they've, they've planned to save 11 days on every sample. The important thing is for these guys, they get hundreds of requests per year. So if I can save them 11 days on literally hundreds of samples, there's a huge, huge benefit for that. They win the customers, 
they respond more quickly. They're obviously doing their bit to save the environment as well, which is pretty critical. So what we're seeing is the typical way that we would uh, we would save time here is really to take a two to eight week process down to just a few minutes. Having that technology in house enables them to work their their uh, their colours get their accurate matches and then send to uh, to the dye mill to produce the bulk. So what we're doing there, we're obviously we're impacting and, and having a big focus on sustainability. And obviously we like to try and align ourselves to uh, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, just to name a few of them here, because it's probably too small for you to see, but life below water, clean water and sanitation, responsible consumption and production, innovation and infrastructure, and then creating partnerships, which is what we're trying to do, not only with other companies in our space, but also early adopters of our technology. And you'll see that as we go through and talk about one of our customers in Israel. Just to put some headline numbers on this, because obviously sustainability is something that we hear every single day. Let's give you some headline numbers of where sustainability makes a big impact for the textile industry. So behind oil, textile dyeing is the second largest polluter of water globally. This is something that we can't be proud of as an industry. We're doing a huge amount of damage. You guys, I'm sure, will see this in India all the time. We see it in China and other parts of the region as well. Uh, textile dyeing has, has got a huge problem and a huge challenge we need to fix. To put some numbers on that, 93 billion cubic meters of water is used by the fashion industry annually. And I looked at that, and quite honestly, I have no idea what 93 billion cubic meters of water looks like. So try to visualize that for myself. I, I did some research, um, and this is slightly easier to understand, but it's the equivalent of 37 million Olympic swimming pools of water is used annually in the textile dyeing process. That's just a, a crazy figure. It's something that we all need to change and we all need to focus on. So that, to me, is a, a, is a much easier way to understand that incredible amount of waste. And, of course, we talked about carbon emissions, and there's big focus on reducing CO2. The fashion industry is responsible for 10% of global carbon emissions, and we all impact that. We all impact that when we're buying and shipping things all over the world. Uh, it's an incredible number, and we need to do something pretty serious to change that. Another number, another embarrassing headline for all of us consumers, um, the average consumer discards 32 kilos of clothing per year. And you'll see this in landfills uh, around the world, that a uh, huge amount of waste You'll see when you open up any, any channel, the amount of waste that companies, uh, high street brands throw away in, in waste stock. So we'll see a huge shift towards that on-demand manufacturing because to, to create um, millions of garments that would remain unsold or have to be reduced is just not sustainable anymore. So it's really important we change that. Bringing this back to our world, the, the, the dyeing of, of yarn, conventional dyeing consumes around 76 litres of clean water for just one kilo of thread. And this example is pretty accurate. So those huge water bottle, uh, water cooler uh, bottles that you'll see in, in, in the offices, each one of those is around about 18 and a half to 19 uh, litres. So in effect, the four uh, large water cooler bottles that you see there in the background gives you one kilo of yarn. So it's really quite incredible to, to think that that much water would be used for just one kilo. It's it's completely uh, unacceptable in this day and age. So we need to change that. And then the final example here is that for every shirt that is made, one cup of water is consumed just to dye the sewing thread. 2.3 grams of sewing thread is what's used uh, to, to sew a, uh, sew a t-shirt, and that's one cup of water. So guys, these are some astronomical numbers, um, embarrassing numbers if you work in this industry, uh, certainly on the traditional side. But at the end of the day, we're also trying to fix this. This is a shocking image that, um, that we saw earlier this year. This is in Aceh in Indonesia in February this year. This poor little girl is wading through bright crimson red water as a flood hit a batik factory to make the traditional Indonesian shirts. It flooded the local population with bright red dyed water. And we have to change this. It's an incredible... Um, challenge that we have to uh, adapt to and change um, but we can all do that we're starting right at the beginning of this process to really revolutionize this industry with twine now i want to talk about some customers who've already started to make this step in the right direction 
And the next few slides is an interview with uh, Lila Caviad, who's our Vice President of Marketing, and a lady called Abigail Katz, who's VP of Research and Development at a company called Delta Gilil. Delta Gilil was a company I spoke about in the very first few slides, uh, one of our first customers globally, in fact, our first customer uh, at Twine. And she's going to talk to you, Abigail and, and Lilak are going to talk to you now about where our technology is used and the difference it's made to, uh, to Delta Galil's business. And then we found a customer that is very innovative and they were willing to go with us to a trial. At the beginning, we started uh, by designing a very small, few hundred of pairs of socks uh, as a trial. And we arrange everything to make it happen. We choose the colors and then it started to grow. The numbers became bigger and bigger like a regular order. So we built unusual time and action because the machine is still in Israel in the R&D center because we are working on socks, on seamless, on uh, sewing threads and we need this machine. So we couldn't move it to our production site, which was in uh, Europe. So with digital dye on advance, the yarn in our R&D center, we create a three shift working together with Twine. They helped us a lot. And we produce the yarns on advance. We send them to Europe, to the factory, to the sock factory. And guess what? Already in stores. Amazing. So it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. And because uh, uh, the way we dyed the uh, yarn, even uh, it's written that each pay, uh, pair is unique. So each pair is different. And I want to uh, say something that uh, I didn't mention at the beginning. All the umbrella of uh, the twine story for our uh, benefits is the sustainable story and the supply chain. Because if you imagine uh, Delta is doing fabric, all kind of circular knitting. So fabric, seamless, uh, socks, all kind. And imagine how a warehouse of our production site and even the development uh, rooms looks like. Because we have hundreds of colors. Every customer has so many colors at the beginning. They have like a palette changing every four months. It's probably a lot of hassle and time to manage all this. And, time to and manage place. money, place, and now during COVID time. And imagine if we are stuck in one of our production sites with lack of red color, just we need the four cones. We need to order the minimum quantity. We are stuck. We are waiting. We need to order it in advance from Far East or from wherever. So it's really very complicated. Uh, thing to, to manage. So Abigail spoke there about several things. <clears throat> First of all, they intended to use their system for R&D, but in the end, they use it for a production run for maybe one of the biggest brands in the world, Nike. Um, and just to go back to the slide I spoke about earlier on with a small production, and it cost around 45 cents for um for a pair of socks i found the black socks with the with the gradient um dyed uh tube the other day on uh on the internet in nike they're sold out by the way they were charging 20 us dollars per pair so this is the amazing thing consumers are prepared to pay more for something that's personalized we've already spoken about that many times during this presentation something that's unique something that's sustainable they sold out of 10,000 pairs of socks and they were charging 20 US dollars per pair. So the thing here, it says uh, Gil Scott Heron is a famous American poet and author. The first revolution is when you change your mind. So that preconceived idea that uh, Abigail had about just using the system for research and development changed very quickly because of the dynamic way you can use digital technology. Secondly, they use it to cover their stock shortages. So they need to manage their inventory and increase their speed of response to their clients. No, uh, no minimum order quantity. There, it's a thing of the past for uh, for this type of technology. So, this is not theory anymore. People are using this for final product, and I think that's an amazing thing. And you can see the product here, the black socks by Nike, um, twenty dollars a pair US, and they cost probably around forty five cents in the uh, in the dyed yarn from Twine. So it's really an incredible, uh, incredible success story. 
every pair is unique. People like that, they want to be different to their friends, and we give them the opportunity to be able to do that using some of our unique uh, digital technology. I'll let Abigail and Lilac speak about another case study now, and then we'll talk about some numbers. We use Twine as a problem solver. So we die to match the yarns, which were not the original yarn, just we want to show the design team of our customer the, the colorway and how it's going to look. And we use it as, we solve the problem immediately. So that specific sample, it was like a specific color that the designer decided that Sometimes. she wanted? Or was it uh, a specific color that for some reason was missing in the, in the wear out? It's a combination. Sometimes it was like the other week, it was a specific three colors that we needed, designer needed immediately. They need to send the sample in two days to the customer. And we didn't have any solution. And so we said, why not? We have twine. Although this specific sample will not be produced by twine because it's a different, uh, we use it to sample and be on time and answer customer demands. But sometimes the designer has an idea, they saw something, they dream about something, you know how designer works, and they need immediately three different color or a degradé or variegated or three colors in one centimeter or whatever they want. They are going to uh, the machine, they ask what they want and they get it the same day or tomorrow. And this is fantastic. And also if we need, as I said, if we are missing uh, yarns in the sampling room, which happens all the time, if either if it's knitting or it's sewing or for socks, no problem. Okay. This is some. Um, so that's just for me to understand, because I'm yeah. coming from the from the new digital world. What would have happened with you know that specific example that you gave me about the designer asking for those three colors? What would have happened otherwise without wine? Nothing. She would have we stopped not, the process and waited for the, the for the yarn. No, she cannot wait because the customer will already get it from somewhere else. Okay. So that's an incredible story. Um, the fact that that it was um, a very much an on-demand process, uh, and as you heard right at the very end of, uh, of Abigail's um, point there, if they didn't have the twine system, that entire job would have gone elsewhere. Someone who maybe had the colors in stock that could give them the sample. And these are the types of timescales that people are working with. So let's look at the case study in numbers. So conventionally, if that job would have been done on the three colors and had to order in those, uh, those cones, of, uh, of the three specific colors. Around about 10 kilos of thread would have been ordered conventionally. With us, you don't need to order anything, just dye the white or the raw recycled yarn that you have in stock. The time would have taken seven to 14 days. Obviously with us, the zero time lag. And you, as I said, you heard Abigail say that if they had to wait seven to 14 days for the yarn to come into stock, they would have lost the job. So although they didn't produce the job using the twine uh, yarn, they sampled it and it went to production uh, using that uh, that color, um, that specific color profile. The cost, as you can imagine, minimum order quantities, shipping, storage, and manpower to manage that. With us, very, very low. It's not that there's no cost because you have, still have to manage the, uh, the, the yarn, the, the white yarn, but it's much less than managing multiple thousands of, uh, of different cones of, uh, of colors. And then the water usage. We've already talked about how much it costs and how many liters are used to, to dye just a small uh, amount of yarn for a shirt, but the water usage would have been incredible. And with us, because our inks are waterless, there's no water usage at all. So it really shows to me that there's no real reason for using conventional in that kind of environment. So let's look at the bigger picture. Let's just take Delta Galil for one. One Twine TS1800 could produce thousands of those jobs per year. And if you extrapolate that over uh, the number of jobs that are produced, look at the savings potentially. So waste savings, waste yarn, five to 10,000 kilos of waste yarn would be saved every year. Time savings, we spoke about it, you heard Abigail, we spoke about it for the other uh, customer in China, they're saving huge amounts of time, having those samples, not having to wait for the dye house to send back samples for, uh, for approval. So 7,000 to 14,000 days of lead time every single year, there's a huge cost saving there. We've already mentioned cost savings, not only on the waste, but on the time. Then water savings. We've spoken many, many times uh, during this presentation today about saving water, uh, reducing our water uh, consumption. Uh, we see that there's a huge opportunity to save 
literally tens of thousands of litres of water. And that's not to mention the logistics costs and, and carbon emissions. So one, one system from Twine can save a huge amount of, uh, of, of waste, and there's an enormous uh, cost saving there. So as Abigail said, in her vision, in the short time, we'll have Twine machines in our factories. It's not for R&D uh, for her anymore. It's production now, and that's the end. It goes back to that Gil Scott Heron uh, quote about changing your mind. That's the first revolution. So to summarize why we go digital, traditional methods, obviously, as we've spoken about, it's time. We lose time. Um, as she said in the last video clip, if they didn't have that specific yarn, uh, they would have lost the job. There's a huge cost to that. So it takes the color design takes several weeks and that response from the, from the dye house. The money, again, to reiterate that, that fact, saving transportation, saving on the fact that there's no minimum order quantities, saving on inventory and inventory management. So it's a lose for traditional dyeing methods that we're trying to change. And then, of course, sustainability. I keep hammering this point home. The water pollution, the high level of waste, CO2 emissions is critical. That is a lose, lose, lose in the, uh, in the traditional dyeing methodologies that we need to try and address. Where does digital win? Well, in all of those areas. Of course, right now we can't do the bulk, but we can do the, the re reduce the process of time, shown from, from days and weeks to minutes and hours, and allows, allows quick decision making uh, and, and fast reaction to win those clients and those customers. Reduce the, uh, the, the amount of money spent on minimum order quantities and inventory, and of course, the sustainability factor as well. Remember, there's no wastewater with the Twine solution. There's no water in our ink, so it's really critical. And I'll leave the last word on this to Abigail and Lulak. Um, you know, we've talked about the journey so far, but let me ask you, when you look a little bit into the future, and if I give you a crystal ball and ask you, you know, what it would look like in five or 10 years' time from today, how do you see this, you know, Twine and Delta uh, relationship together and where this technology can take you? I don't need a crystal ball. Uh, it happened the moment I met uh, Alon seven years ago, because he at that time was concentrating, solving very seriously the uh, uh, embroidery yarns. Mm -hmm. And in my imagination, all Delta warehouses, yarn warehouses, of so, so fabrics are going to be white only white, minimum stock, white, and lines of digital printer dyeing the colors among demand. So you can have, if you can imagine, you can have an order, no minimum. A customer would like to have a seamless garment, 10,000 black, 300 yellow, and one purple, and you can do it because you will print among demand. And if you're stuck with something and you need to change, you will do it on spot. You don't need to go to the yarn supplier. Your yarn supplier will be a white yarn supplier, only white, no dyeing, no water, not any more grading second the polluter in the world as a textile. We are talking about different world. And, and, okay. and what about the machine itself in terms of productivity and, and you know the volume that it can produce. Listen, I trust Twine. I know them. I'm not doing any publicity or PR for Twine. I'm talking from my experience. They are professional in what they are doing. What they promise they deliver to us till now. We have a wonderful color fastness. We have a wonderful variety of using the colors. And I think that uh, I trust them that the capacity will grow by the time. It's their job. Our job is to bring innovative solution to our customers. We are a textile platform to innovative solution to the customers. That's how we work. And Twine is one hand to help us do it, either if it's under the sustainability, supply chain, or the visual, which is very important. Very, very important in our world. Amazing. Thank you very much, Abigail. For Thank you. Making the time to talk to me. Lovely to see you. Thank you. So I think we've we've got a, a real convert there um, in Abigail, and it's uh, it's great to hear the voice of the customer. Um, there's a famous proverb that I've heard many many times in this part of the world, which is the best time to plant a tree was 25 years ago. The second best time is now. For me, the best time to get into uh, digital dyeing 
really is now. We're at the start of an incredible journey. The acceptance of our technology, um, because of what it does to fix these incredible um, sustainability issues and cost issues, um, will only accelerate over time. So I really believe it's a great time. Uh, it's amazing for me to bring um, this product to India. We, we believe it's time to bring the digital dining revolution to India. Uh, we're doing that with our partner, Orange, who, uh, who we've, uh, we've brought on board for a few months now. As we said previously, they, uh, they're going to be in, uh, in, in Delhi this week. And I want to allow Ayush Rathi from, uh, from Orange Group just to talk a little bit about his business and, uh, and really just give you a flavor as to where they see the, the opportunity in India. So Ayush, over to you. Uh, thanks, Annie. Thanks for your presentation. And hello, everybody. I would quickly tell you about uh, the Orange Group and what are we doing. So it's been more than 10 years. It's been a decade we are doing uh, digital textile. So that means we are printing fabrics. So when we started, the technology was very less. It was very much for sampling. And today, it's only digital. People don't have choice. Digital is the only option. And the same we are feeling with Twine. Uh, the technology for thread dyeing is the first ever in the world. And we believe this will gradually take over the conventional method. There are a few companies we are dealing with. So we have experience of uh, handling international companies and handling the customers. And uh, at the moment, for support and services, we have a strong team who is working from uh, uh, for 24-7. You can call us anytime. And service is something we focus a lot on because we believe that is how we can make our customers progress ahead. So we are having an office in different location. It's uh, near Delhi, Mumbai and the Surat area. So you guys can have a great support structure available in India. And uh, Gartex is the exhibition we are participating, which we guys told you earlier. We would love to have you all guys there and to come and visit and see the demo of the machine. And also we are planning a couple of open houses. The first one would be happening around the 23rd of December. This is the machine at the moment in the demo center. So we would love to have you guys to check the samples to see what amazing technology this is. Thank you. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you, Ayesh. Uh, guys, I know um, it's, uh, it's been a long presentation, almost uh, 50 minutes or so. I appreciate everyone's time. I really uh, thank you. I know there are a lot of questions. We don't have a lot of time to answer them, but I promise any questions that's in the chat, any questions in the Q&A, uh, we will get around to answering those for you. Um, my email address and Ayesha's email address is here. Please take note of them if you want to send us uh, a note directly. We have absolutely no charges there. We Please uh, feel free to, to send us any questions you may have. And I think we'll probably take three or four questions, uh, Ganesh, right? Uh, wonderful presentation there, Andy. Uh, yes, we have a few questions from our attendees. Uh, first question to you. Uh, can you die... Any other thread apart from polyester using your machines? Great question. So uh, right now, no. Um, obviously, we're getting asked lots of questions about when will we support cotton. Obviously, India is a, a big cotton market. But right now, it's just polyester. Um, our, our chemistry, the inks that we use, the dyes that we use to, to dye, the, um, to dye the, the yarn and thread are developed by us in-house. Obviously, the, the mixture of the, of the technology and the inks with the yarn is very critical. So right now, it's just polyester, but obviously, as time moves on, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll approach other types of fibres to be able to dye those as well, because obviously, there's a, a much bigger challenge for us to fix, as you said, with the amount of wastewater in the, um, in the environment. So right now, just polyester, but we'll move on to uh, onto other fibres uh, in due course. Okay. Okay. Uh, so what is the minimum length a customer could die using Twine Solutions? Another great question. Um, to be honest, right now, um, 10 to 15 meters, you don't need to die thousands of meters to, uh, to, uh, to, to see the benefits of the system. Generally, most customers would die, I don't know, 30 to 50 meters to get the color uh, accuracy and, and, and do some small tweaking. As I said, it's a very simple system to use. If you think it needs more magenta, you can add more magenta. But in order to do that, you don't have to dye a, a, a large cone. You can dye just a few hundred meters to uh, to, to get the uh, to get the color accuracy and away you go for your uh, for your um, production. Okay. And uh, what about plantone colors? Can you dye them? This is one of a question from another uh, customer. Right. So, 
Sure. So, so Pantone Colors, right now we have uh, several libraries in the system. We have our own library. We're working with Coates, who's one of our investors, to put another uh, one of their libraries in there as well. There's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. So we don't have this, the, the ability to select Pantone Colors, but you can input CMYK values, RGB values, and even LAB values as well. So there's, uh, there's various different ways of achieving those Pantone Colors other than keying in the, the specific uh, uh, Pantone code. Okay. That's a good question. Thank you. And the next question is probably the most important question of the evening. Hmm. How much does it cost to dye one kg of yarn? So I'll answer that question in two parts. First of all, to give you the answer to that, it's around about eighty to ninety dollars US um, in, uh, in in dye. But my my comment to that would be if you're planning to dye one kg kilo of yarn using our system, it's probably not the right, right solution for you. Where we see our benefit right now is in the fast turnaround of small samples uh, development. One of the great things we can do that we didn't really touch on uh, is a gradient. So the nice thing you see here with a thank you, I can dye a single piece of yarn to reflect all those colors in here without, uh, without um, going back and reloading the system. I can dye multiple colors in a single, uh, single thread. So they're the kind of value adds that we look at rather than uh, dyeing a kilo of yarn because the process is not really there for bulk yet. Again, going back to what we spoke about with, um, with the different fibers, we will obviously improve the technology and in increase the speed. But right now, if you're looking to dye a kilo of yarn, it's probably not the right technology for you um, at this stage. Okay, okay, let's let's have one more question before we wrap up this webinar. Uh, let's say a customer has his own colors. Do you mm -hmm. reckon he will be able to bulk dye using your machine? So for bulk dye right now, it goes back to the, to the last question that we, that we kind of answered. Right now, um, we don't see that's where the benefit of the system comes. But as I just mentioned, maybe a, a, a couple of questions ago, one of our investors and a company that we work very, very closely with is Coates. Coates is one of the largest um, thread and yarn manufacturers in the world. They have a big team in India, a very, very smart team in India that I spoke to last week. Um, and what we're working on with Coates is the ability to take data from our system and share that with Coates so they can say, okay, this blue or this green that's been dyed using the twine system, we want to dye 20 kilos of this exact color to do a production run. And we're working with Coates to develop that kind of technology as well. Right now, uh, we don't have that um, kind of live and, and, and active, but if you take the, the LAB values uh, from the system and send those, to, um, send those to a dye house, generally they can get close to the color. And we've done that exercise several times with, uh, with customers here already. Um, so yeah, there's various different ways. And as I said, we're right at the start of this revolution and we'll um, develop and, and, uh, and grow our capabilities and the, the future is bright. The future is twined. Beautiful. Uh, thank you, Andy. Thank you. We come to the end of this webinar. Uh, it was definitely a thought-provoking one, and I'm sure that's the need of the art uh, from the digital industry. There are a lot more coming in, uh, questions coming in from our attendees, but uh, uh, don't worry, guys. We'll be sharing these questions with Andy and Ayush. They will get back to you directly on your mail ID with their replies, all right? So once again, I take this opportunity to thank our uh, speaker, Mr. Andy Yaron and his team from Twine Solutions. And also a special thanks to Ayush from Modern Tech uh, for being part of this webinar uh, to, and making it a grand success. I'll uh, see you all in the next webinar. So until then, stay tuned and please stay safe. This is Ganesh Kalidasan signing out. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ganesh. Recordings.